Let's welcome in our NBA insider, Bill Ryder. Now, Embiid cleared concussion protocol. He was in today's shoot around, but he still remains out as of right now for game three against the Heat. There's still a chance he can return tonight, though. Doc Rivers saying his status is a wait and see situation. What do you think? What do you make of all of this? Do you think we're going to see Embiid tonight? Jenny, I, I do, because folks I've talked to around the league the last few days have believed and have stressed to me that there's even an opportunity. There's a slight chance Joel Embiid can play. He's going to try to play. The Six are going to try to have him play. The fact he's through concussion protocols to me means if he can deal with the pain tolerance, he'll be out there. This is a – Doc Rivers is right. It, it, so there's adjustments. There's tape. But the fact is that Eric Spolstra can make adjustments and has tape, too. No Embiid equals no chance. There's massive pressure on the Sixers organization to be successful this season. You have to have Embiid in this game. You cannot go down 3-0 if you want to have any kind of an opportunity not to look back at 2022 as a disappointment. Yeah, going off exactly what you said there, regardless if Embiid plays or not, Philly needs a win. Can we expect James Harden to finally step up? I, you know, th there's a time when I would have said, yeah, we can expect at least a, a game or two from James Harden, but we have not seen anything approaching during his time in Philadelphia since that trade from Brooklyn in February, anything approaching the old James Harden. And this is a shocking stat, Jenny. This guy, James Harden, has not taken 20 shots in a single game, not one time in the regular season or one time in the postseason with Philadelphia so far this year. And that obviously includes this series with the two games where there is no Joel Embiid. This is a dude who once averaged 24, 25 shots per game over the course of seasons. I, they need him to do that. It is the critical question. I don't think they can win without Embiid. I also don't think they can win this series with Embiid going forward if Harden isn't able, at least in a few games, to assert himself. We haven't seen it. We haven't seen anything to suggest that Harden's willing to do what he has to do. But maybe the old James Harden is in there somewhere, and he'll, uh, he'll surprise all of us. Some crazy stats there. Philly definitely trying to dig themselves out of that hole in game three tonight. Now the Heat, they improved to 5-0 and at home in the postseason. How has Victor Oladipo's emergence added to the team's depth there? I think I think it's critical, and I, and I think it's, it's really surprising. The Miami Heat were expected to be, I think rightfully so, one of the contenders, one of the top teams that, that had the chance to come out of a really crowded East. But those of us that cover the NBA, people that I've talked to, I think even Vegas didn't factor in in a very real way, in a very impactful way, Victor Oladipo. He played, I think it's eight games in the regular season this year. There's a history, of course, of injuries coming off that quad surgery a year ago. And what we've seen from him in the Miami uniform in this postseason, had 19 points in a game, had 23 points in a game last series, gives them a level of scoring, gives them defensive depth. This is a two-way player that frankly makes one of the deepest teams in the NBA, one of the best coach teams in the NBA, that much more problematic and you're trying to defend what they do and that much more easier for Eric Spolster to make the adjustments you have to make. If the Oladipo that we've gotten signs of, the minutes that he's played, the scoring output he's given, the defensive excellence we've seen, over the course of this postseason is real. If, if he's able to stay healthy, if this is who he is again, it is huge for Miami. Yeah, game three will tip off at 7 p.m. tonight. Now we're going to look at more game three storylines here. The Phoenix Suns, they jumped out to a 2-0 series lead against the Mavericks. Dominant win on Wednesday. Who needs to step up for Dallas now? They need to give Luka Doncic some support there. Oh my, yeah, so, so, how about, <laughs> I mean, the answer is Jalen Brunson. I mean, it's, it, it really is, and you can see the frustration on Luka's face now. We've gotten to the point where he is wearing his, his anger, his frustration uh, on his shoulder. Jalen Brunson has been extraordinary in the games where Luka Doncic has not played. We saw that earlier in the postseason, and, and you see the stats there. Without the ball in his hands, with Luka Doncic on the floor, Brunson has not been effective in this postseason, and he averages just 15 points a game over the 60 games in the regular season this year when he was on the floor with Luka. It doesn't matter. I know it's different when you want the ball in your hands. I know it's different when everything goes through Luka. I know Luka's usage rate is through the, through the roof. It doesn't matter. You have to find some sort of a contributor who's not named, say, Spencer Dinwiddie. You just, you do, and that is Brunson. Short of him being offensively excellent, and frankly, the rest of that team hitting the open shots that Luka is going to provide for them, it's going to be a very painful and short series for Dallas. Yeah, I want to ask about that. The Suns have now won their past 11 games against the Mavericks. The series heading to Dallas tonight for game three. Do you think the, they're going to sweep the Mavs? I mean, is that going to happen tonight? 
I think they need to. I mean, it's human nature, and we've seen this over the course of, of the NBA postseason for years and years. When you get up 2-0 or 3-0, sometimes the gentleman's sweep will set in. You'll sort of take your foot off the gas a little bit for a game. But the last few years has been a reminder in the NBA that health is critical to success and guys can break down over the course of a postseason. We have seen championships turn on injuries in the finals, or the conference finals. And the reality is that Chris Paul, as great as he's been, as extraordinary as he's been, as impactful as he's been, has a, a history of getting injured in the postseason. It's basically two months of basketball. So, yeah, I think if, if you're the Suns and you have a game plan, if you're Monty Williams, the head coach, the message is let's, let's put these guys out of their misery. Let's win this thing in four. Let's give Chris Paul, let's give our leader and really everybody a chance to heal up because every game you play, we've seen this this year and in years past, Every game you play in the postseason is a risk someone gets hurt, and barring an injury, the Suns are clearly the favorites to be NBA champions this year. Yeah, the Suns definitely looking for that next step towards a sweep that is all going to tip off tonight at 9.30 p.m. Bill, thank you so much, as always, for joining us here on HQ. We appreciate your time. Two series tonight, Sixers, the Heat, they'll tip off at 7 Eastern. You'll find that one in Philly. Some good news for the Heat. Point guard Kyle Lowry was upgraded to questionable with a hamstring injury. Meanwhile, in the West, the Dallas Mavericks trying to dig themselves out of that 0-2 hole. Starting with Game 3 against the Suns. That tip-off at 9.30 Eastern in Dallas. The Celtics, Bucks, and Grizz Warriors. They get a little extra day of rest. Saturday, both those teams are tied up at one game apiece. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.